And now, Jesse hyphenated last name is going to tell us about gun stores. Um, I, I will tell you that there is a, a coalition of groups and small businesses and um, all sorts of other organizations from churches to carpent, carpenters unions called the Georgia Water Coalition. Y'all are a member of it and your representative in the Georgia Water <coughs> Coalition is Russ England. Which Russ, we appreciate you working with us all the time. And uh, the, the coal ash issue and the trust funds issue are two of our big issues in the coalition. <laughs> Yeah, so um, Jess got to talk a lot about just like the boring field sampling stuff. So I'm good to talk about what you guys are really interested in. Um, that is statutory fees and their associated trust funds. Right? <laughs> um, so we'll, we'll wake up. I know that that last one was, you know, real tedious, getting out in the field, you know. Um, so you guys are, when you're out there, in your heads, you're in the gold dome, wondering what those guys are up to, um, for good reason. Uh, my name is Jesse DeMumbria Chapman. I'm the Upper Coosa River Keeper. Um, our organization existed before we joined Waterkeeper, so um, I'm technically the River Keeper at Coosa River Basin Initiative. Um, I'm not, despite my name tag, the Coosa River Keeper, which is a nice young man named Frank. Uh, for now. Uh, he's in uh, Alabama. Who's um, is a big river. Um, so what, we're, what I'm talking about is uh, these trust funds. So basically, the General Assembly in Georgia has the ability to create fees for anything at once. Um, so when you pay for a fee to get your driver's license, when you get a speeding ticket, if you have to go to court, there are fees associated with what you pay. Um, if you get uh, one of the kind of novelty license tags, um, when you take stuff to the dump, or when you buy new tires. Um, so the General Assembly can create all of these fees, but does not have the constitutional ability to dedicate those fees. So what that means is they can make a fee for whatever they want, and through the appropriations process, rob that fee and put it into the general fund to pay other portions of the budget, which is just a tax by another name. So in practice, this means that during recession, budget makers uh, rob all of these fees and say, we balance the budget with no new taxes. Um, but what they have in fact done is taxed the entire state by taking these fees that were meant to fund these programs and not distributing that money back into the communities that need it. Um, I'm gonna point out some pictures. We've had some, uh, we'll, we'll say unique ideas on how to bring attention to this issue. Um, in the picture here uh, is the scrap uh, So this was a former colleague of mine's idea. Uh, it was a horrible idea. Uh, we, put 500 scrap tires in the back of a U-Haul in Rome, Georgia, drove them to Atlanta, built a replica of the Capitol building out of those scrap tires uh, with this spray-painted gold dome and everything, um, and then had to take them all down, load them back into the U-Haul truck a couple of times, drive them back to Rome and unload them where they belonged, and at the end of all that, we still got fined by the Georgia Building Authority uh, because we left some stains, and there he was. Uh, so we were fined for our demonstration, like real advocates. Uh, it made us feel pretty good. Um, and we, were, we were really sticking it to the man. Uh, the following year, we had a much better idea. There was only one tire. So we went from 500 to one, which is uh, a phenomenal improvement. Um, and we rolled this tire with volunteers' help around the Capitol for 24 hours before Capitol Conservation Day. Um, what this says here, this is the result of this rating. So uh, the state has a hazardous site uh, inventory. It's a list of sites where there is known groundwater or soil contamination. Um, many of those sites have been on there since the inventory was created back in the mid-90s. Alright, so if these hazardous sites were born 
you know, when they were added to the list, right now they could now rent a car. You know, they're 25 years old. Um, over that same period of time um, where we had the hazardous waste trust fund that was supposed to be collecting fees to take those sites off the list to mitigate that contamination, over $200 million of that, those funds were appropriated elsewhere into Georgia's budget. And that money is gone. It's spent. It, it went to other things. We don't know because they don't track it that way. It was just a giant slush fund to kind of go into whatever projects politicians wanted to spend money on. Um, we take huge issue with this. All right? This is money that is collected locally at our landfills and at, by tire dealers and is paid to the state. It's entrusted to the state to then come back into our communities and help us keep our water clean. All right? And the lawmakers at the Capitol have failed to do that. Um, so our proposed fix, and we've been working on this for some time, um, is a constitutional amendment. that will require two-thirds vote approval in both chambers, both the House and the Senate. We are blessed with some tremendous leadership in the House. Um, last year, we had a House Resolution 158, you see written on, candidly on this tire. Um, that uh, passed the House nearly unanimously. 166 votes yay to one person who voted against it, and that guy votes against everything. Um, on the ballot also last year, we did a statewide poll, and regardless of party affiliation, you'll be shocked to find out that Georgia voters don't really care for paying a fee and then having that go into the general fund. Um, so just shy of 90% of Georgia voters, regardless of party, thought that these fees ought to be spent on the programs they were intended to fund. So, um, some opportunities that we have. Um, first of all, we have a new lieutenant governor. Um, we ran into hurdles in the Senate last year. Um, it just so happens our new lieutenant governor was one of the co-sponsors on HR 158, which puts us in a much better position politically. Um, we still have excellent support uh, in the House, um, and we also have the support from um, ACCG and GMA, so that's uh, Association of County Commissioners of Georgia and the uh, Georgia Municipal Association. Um, the reason why cities and counties are for this, um, here's a good example on this map. So all of these pink dots across the state are municipal landfills with known soil and groundwater contamination who could get funding assistance from the state to help mitigate their soil and groundwater contamination. So communities want this money to come back because it helps property values, it helps keep their water clean, it helps them keep their landfills in compliance. Um, and so we have a lot of statewide support and what we need are people to be contacting your reps. So if being taxed, but being told it's a fee pisses you off, take your phone out and snap a picture of that link. That will take you to a petition where you can send an earnest letter supporting a fix to this problem to your elected official, to the lieutenant governor, and to our governor. Um, that's free, it'll take you just a few seconds. Uh, and if you want to know any more, um, that's my contact information. And I'm just going to leave this slide back up because everybody should be angry about this issue. And that's all I have to say. questions for Jesse before we uh, take a little break down front here. I want to play devil's advocate. Um, those you mentioned during the recession, they took that pot of money and used it for, they want for what they needed to do. I want to know, like, what, what was, I mean, I'm not from Georgia, but was there any time that they saved their citizens because they hadn't thought about appropriating the money and all of a sudden they needed that emergency fund? So, interesting you should mention this. We're going to repeat the 
question. Um, so what she asked was basically during the recession, was it more, I'm get, let me paraphrase, was it more appropriate to spend that money when the state was facing defaulting on bills? Yes, I completely agree. And that is why in HR 158 last year and in whatever bill drops this legislative session, there is like emergency cutoff language written into the bill. If um, the state's revenues fall by a certain percentage, it automatically allows the General Assembly to then use these fees to pay off debt, to keep bus drivers driving those buses, to keep paying teachers. It's built for that flexibility. But while that was necessary during the recession, the General Assembly has still, year after year, despite a robust recovery, failed to appropriate the full amount of those funds to these programs. And there are still sites on a hazardous inventory that have been there since 1994, 95. Um, so yes, we do think that the legislature should have that flexibility, and it is handily written into that. One more question. You nailed it, buddy. And I'll, I'll make a comment that not only do you have an opportunity to contact your senator and your representative, and not if we pass this bill, but when we pass this bill, you'll have an opportunity to weigh in because it will be on the ballot, uh, we hope, in 2020. Um, and uh, it, will, it will have to pass as one of those aggravating constitutional amendments that you always see on the Georgia ballot. I guess they're always there because our Constitution has not been perfected yet. Um, the work in progress. Where's the work in progress? So thank you all for listening to the first part of our, of our comments. And we're going to take a break until 2.10 and uh, dive back into it.